Ladies and gentlemen, welcome uh, to my channel. My name is Brian, if you happen to be new around here. Uh, but today we're doing something a little bit different. This is going to be more of a reaction discussion style video, diving into the theory of YouTube, what's going on behind the scenes, what's frustrating a lot of content creators. And this also is going to stem into other content creators as a discussion. Now, this video was sent to me as it's kind of my reaction policy uh, that you guys request me to uh, talk about certain videos. Uh, but beyond that aspect, I'd actually already seen this video. So this isn't going to be a true, pure reaction kind of tripped up over those words, more of a discussion diving into the core content of what Jeremy here from the quartering is proposing, but also just how it might impact you. You might already feel impacted. One of the things I've remarked on and told several people, I was like, I'm not seeing your videos in my feed anymore. I'm actively having to go seek those out. And that's actually a little bit different. My, my feed is being overwhelmed by obviously things that are going on in the world and so much more. So we're going to kind of discuss it. We're going to explore it. As always, I love to know your thoughts in the comments. I really enjoy reading those. And let's go ahead and dive in. Now, it is my policy. I always like to pre-like the videos uh, before I jump in. Being that I've already seen it, I think it's a decent video. But let's go ahead and explore it. And uh, yeah, let me know goes <laughs> what you think about any and all of this. But here we go. What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Why, thank I've you. I've been doing a good bit of a deep dive into YouTube analytics and to the platform and how it's changing. Many of my viewers believe, myself included, that it's not changing for the better. If you've been around... The, the th first thing I, I want to say on this regard is there's a lot of confirmation bias here on as a creator, right? Um, YouTube and social media is especially good at creating echo chambers. And to fight against that is to fight against your own self-interest. And so like if we were to categorize YouTubers into different buckets, like those who are like full-time content creators, and I'm not dogging on anybody for being in any of these buckets, like everybody kind of has their own uh, and, and different uh, goals when it comes to making content. Some people do it for just the sheer fun of it, with the memeing of it, with the trolling nature of it. Uh, some people do it because it acts as a like an alternate source of revenue. Some do it to scratch a creative itch. Some do it uh, as a career. And we've seen careers built, destroyed, built again, and so much more. In fact, we're, Ninja was even talking about this the other day on his stream uh, because some people, you know, like, yeah, he's not the biggest streamer in the world, but he still will forever be known and I think he's come to an acceptance of that as an example. Anyway, I know that's a little bit of a random uh, kind of tangent, but like I said, we'd be bringing other content creators uh, into, into the fold. And where Jeremy's coming from here is both true, but also in a way bias towards what he's experiencing, right? Uh, in terms of the style of content. If I were to reflect and take that same approach here on Ginger Prime or here within gaming, we could say that YouTube's definitely changing and hurting gaming. Now in the law, in the short run that I would say is true. Like one of the things that we've seen over and over again within gaming is just everything is way down. Now, a part of that might be attributed to YouTube. A part of that might be distributed to the state of the world. A part of that might, you know, like there's all these little buckets that actually then define your algorithm, right? You click on a video and it's going to feed you more videos. This is the danger of, uh, of social media. Uh, not that, like YouTube's a little bit less because there is a better personal, like you can get, I think you get a lot more value out of YouTube. Maybe that's my own confirmation bias speaking here, but I think uh, social media can be very dangerous because especially let's say you only then get consumed by negative content. You only get consumed by, uh, you know, like that kind of aspect. It can then like, you know, almost in a way like ruin some of those receptors in your brain. To the, like so there's a lot of things that when it comes down to social media that while i always am going to advocate for personal responsibility i think education is absolutely critical and i would love to see more education around how you and i consume these these products as being the product and a lot of them because they offer their services for free like that's a lot to say here just at the start of the video but that's why i thought this would be a really good video for us kind of talk about here today but i'll go ahead and let jeremy continue on just note that when i hear a content creator say that especially not for the better like i think that is obviously a perspective you know approach but based off the content and the wide range of content him 
constantly chasing after the the trending topic and framing it in a very sensationalized way uh, is going to be something that has a lifespan. And having talked to Jeremy on the podcast about this specifically, like a couple years ago, yeah, like there is in you know his own knowledge that there is kind of like a, a point where it's like you've kind of hit your peak, right? You've kind of hit that that wave. You've you know you 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 become a known entity, and that's a good and a bad thing. Um, you know, especially when it comes down to like putting out opinions on the internet. This is going to be the future of YouTube. Mm -hmm. And the way they do that is essentially, in my opinion, suppress our traditional product, our regular videos, and promote whatever the heck it is that they think is going to be the future of YouTube. Yeah. Uh, in every single solitary case, YouTube failed. Equally as good, if not better, depending on various categorical, you know, things, you know, I think. So I, I can't speak to BitChute and Odyssey and whatever else is out there. I'm not on every platform. I don't have the energy nor the desire to be uh, everywhere. I, I think that kind of goes against uh, just the l the limits of my humanity and my, my time frame and commitments that I have available. Now, um, on the note, though, that I would say that uh, YouTube has tried and failed. I think it's we want a platform that has to try and evolve. Uh, I think still YouTube is, is by far the biggest platform and both in terms of the style content and delivery, uh, it really, that then becomes like, what is your core audience and who have you uh, built up? And this is something when it goes right back to that echo chamber, it goes right back to that confirmation bias. You end up putting in so much effort into A, B, C, D, and E buckets. And then essentially, if you branch out beyond that, that's why you've heard time and time again, creators talk about how difficult it is to pivot. Now, personally speaking, I think I have found the solution for that based off the current state of YouTube. And it's the concept of the multi-channel is instead of trying to train your community or your audience or whatever term you want to use for those who watch your videos, that you actually just invite them into another style or another topic, but then they get to make that choice as opposed to like in this case, like we're here on Ginger Prime, I do variety and I do variety content because that's, I think, something very important to me. But I do know that I have to work 10 times as hard to really bring about what it means to actually get those, the you know, the views, to get the engagement, to get that kind of interaction uh, on this channel. Because l it is less likely that somebody will click on like this video specifically because that it's not related to maybe the reason why they subscribed, whether it was for Outriders or it was for Final Fantasy XIV or if it was for Fantasy Star Online 2 or if it was for forever. And one of the things that you'll, you'll discover as, especially you get older, now that I'm I, I'm 40 years old, uh, as I start and get older, like I don't have the interest in chasing every trend, especially when it comes to gaming. I've ended up hitting a couple of trends because my passion aligned up with them, and it's always interesting to me, especially when you when you get a trending topic. You are always going to get those people who are just like, oh, like you're only just doing this because of the trends, and and you know that person's new. Like, well, welcome to the channel. Like, you know, <laughs> I'll see if the, I doubt I'll see you again, because obviously you have you're coming in, you know, hot and heavy. But like if you like, I, I see a lot of YouTubers. I'm not dogging on those who choose to do this. I just don't have the energy or the interest to fake it, to be into games that I'm just not into. And so we, even within gaming, like a lot of what you have to do if you want to try and compete in like the bigger pool of it, especially against people who have the money and the resources and the time and the interest, right? Like I still go to work. I, I still take care of my family. My voice was like trying to fail me for a second. Like all of those things are true. So I, within my capacity, I'm only going to be interested in a handful of games and those aren't always going to align. But if I tried to go above and beyond and fake that, I think that would come across. I think that does come across. I, I don't think, and so that's where, when it comes down to it, like, yeah. And then when you look at the content, like Jeremy and others kind of put out, like, especially if you're hitting trending topics, news topics, what's, what, what are people talking about? And then always jumping in and weighing on your opinion. At some point, I think that's going to wear you out. Now, all this started because like we talked about YouTube being the biggest platform and other monetization options, uh, like the, the content creation game is kind of a feast and famine kind of approach. And so that's where, like, if you were thinking about getting into it, it is important that you have other avenues. It's also important that you remove yourself from the emotion 
of the content itself. Meaning, hey, that view, that video that I put out didn't get a lot of views. Maybe the algorithm pushed it. Maybe the algorithm didn't. Like you don't have control. You don't have control over YouTube. Like we're all just a, as a part of this, this platform that it will change and it will change again and it will change in the future. Um, it's, I don't know. It's a fool's game to think that we have kind of that control and power being the content creators as opposed to the platform. The platform is like the house and gambling. They're going to do what they're going to do. They're going to do it. And I think with the hopeful best interest, especially looking five and 10 years down the road, but usually whenever they make these changes, it's immediately felt anytime YouTube makes bigger changes, algorithmic changes, like it's immediately felt. And you'll see a lot of YouTubers around that same time, around this time, you'll probably also, you might've already seen it. The I'm done with the algorithm game videos that you'll see other content creators make. It's a great way to re-engage your community because it is, but it does create that. It, it is a, a withdrawal of the trust that you have in terms of how you title and, and you and you thumbnail your videos when you do something like that. So you can only do that a couple of times before people really start getting fed up uh, and they might get fed up right away. But anyway, it is, you know, it is all of this is it, it feels orchestrated, but I, I could be wrong. I'm obviously project I'm obviously projecting and assuming the unknown here based off my personal experience with multiple content creators. And this isn't a conversation just between Jeremy and me. This is something I've talked with a wide range of content creators behind the scenes of what they're thinking and what they're feeling. And they're all feeling this right now. We'll talk about more why here in a minute. I think Odyssey does much better at getting my viewers that want to see my videos, my videos, for example, than YouTube does. Um, it's built differently. It's, 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 it's trying to monetize, but the elephant in the room is made of money. The only reason YouTube has remained as dominant as it has is because it has a monopoly on paying creators for videos. This is undeniable. It's the um, best this one is a, from what a I've practical seen. Practical monopoly. They own the ad revenue via AdWords, and they own the platform in which the videos are displayed. Every every other platform, whether it's Rumble, Bitshoot, or Odyssey, or NewTube, or all Utreon, or whatever it is that comes out, <laughs> it's always going to have the same problem. Hey, Jeremy, don't worry about the fact that you don't make any money producing shorts. You need to be doing shorts. Otherwise, <laughs> nobody knew is going to find your channel. So this is something that we're absolutely seeing. Now, I would say like for me, the revenue on YouTube, uh, I've shared like, I think, uh, you know, it's usually around six or $700 here on this channel. Um, that's the average. There's a couple of months where that's spiked. So that's typically going on. But the majority of that is because you guys have hit the join button. Uh, we have the membership here on the channel. And a lot of that is that a lot of members support me with the dollar a month. And that is unbelievable. And thank you guys so much for doing that. Um, that is definitely new where that wasn't a thing, you know, a year ago. Uh, that is now. So the, the ad revenue here on the channel has dropped in half. Um, but that could also be a lot of other factors. Uh, and so then it comes down to shorts. Yeah, like the thing is, is that YouTube is pushing it and then they've done all these different things where they do push certain features and products and, you know, things like that, which makes sense. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be a lasting thing, but they have to compete with TikTok and offer. And basically what you end up seeing is that people are making stuff for TikTok. People are then putting that same up stuff on YouTube. Actually, I'm making it for YouTube and I'm uploading it to TikTok. I'll include my TikTok link in the description of this video if you guys want to follow me over there. Um, it's literally just my shorts all loaded up. Um, and uh, yeah, and it obviously in, and over on TikTok, we're starting to grow there as well. And so it's just something that is interesting. Now, I don't get any money for the shorts, but it is a level of discoverability. And this then ties into why do I keep getting discovered outside of shorts? And it's usually because I try to focus in on value and discoverable driven content. I view myself as an educator, somebody who I like to share what I've learned here on the platform. I like to teach and help people like hopefully get and do the things they want to do in life. And if I can help in some way, that's a really good thing. Um, that's where when you look at somebody who is somebody uh, like focusing content on what's the trending topic like that in entertainment is what I would call fickle and people's value of entertainers changes with time. Uh, that's why when you look at like, even with musicians, like you could say like, Oh, I really enjoyed this, you know, decade of that musician. And then this is, you know, not so good, et cetera. Like everybody's entitled and 
uh, should be to their own opinion and how and what kind of they want to consume, etc. So that's where I find chasing trends um, to be personally pretty exhausting. But anyway, we'll, we'll we'll continue. Hopefully, I didn't lose the train of thought here as we as we move through this video. Don't worry about um, live streaming on top of the five videos you're already doing, Jeremy. You need to be live streaming because YouTube wants to be Twitch and YouTube wants to be TikTok, and so. The very same platform that tells us they care deeply about uh, creator mental health and creator burnout piles more work on the uh, plates of uh, existing content creators. Look, I'm okay. I got in before YouTube pulled up the ladder on a lot of other commentator commentating channels. Obviously, I wish it weren't that way, but when I go live, enough people will find it and and make it you know, and, and, and make it entertaining and, and provide a product to my viewers. I actually love live streaming here on YouTube. Now I share a, uh, a Twitch uh, partner uh, channel uh, with my friend Chris as a part of work to game. Um, but beyond that, like some of the things that Twitch is doing right now actually makes it way more enjoyable to stream on Twitch and it kind of goes back and forth. And so YouTube feels obviously very event driven. So streaming on YouTube for me is very relaxing. I love that it just gets done. They've talked about a, a future vision of live VOD and in short form content in which that like you could clip this video here. I won't ever see that clip right now. I don't know why. Ultimately, that's going to be something that I they need to figure out because if there was a way that I could within the system at YouTube, take those clips, automatically turn them into shorts, and bada bing, bada boom, done. That in and of itself is a game changer. That's that's the thing that YouTube has that nobody else will have. Uh, so I'll continue to stream to YouTube and we'll continue to stream to Twitch. That is essentially something that is both enjoyable. So you'll see the bigger events over here on the YouTube and you'll see the smaller events over on Twitch where it's just more you know relational. The, the tools that Twitch offers that YouTube is slowly starting to dip its toe into um, are, are so great. They are really great. Despite all the people who uh, are frustrated with Twitch because like Twitch does some stupid stuff from time to time, but so, do, but YouTube is also slow to move from time to time. So there's like, sometimes you kind of as a creator kind of feeling like you're in between this weird, this random limbo. Um, but to be able to create live content and then at some point to be able to turn that live content and have it ideally turn into and evolve into all the different things would be great. Personally speaking, I really think that as a part of a channel page, as a part of just the content consumed, they really need to segment how those are displayed. Like my shorts, I, I specifically said my shorts not to publish to you guys so you don't get inundated with them, right? So I said, don't notify a subscriber. So you have to go to the shorts feed or you go to the channel and then look at the shorts tab if you want to see my shorts. But... <laughs> What a stupid name. <laughs> like, like I'm literally wearing shorts right now. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm just like, that's so stupid. Um, but anyway, I digress. So I'm sitting here saying, uh, looking at those and I'm like, yeah, this is, but it's, it's when you look at the, just the videos tab, it's all there. Like, no, they need a, a videos tab, a live stream, like archive tab and a shorts tab. And then that way it's just a little bit cleaner. Not like this one tab to rule them all for videos is not working or it could be one tab like content and then you would go in there and you would see like live stream content uh, you know vodcon you know like uploads and then you would see like shorts or something like that a little bit simpler cleaner approach i believe some of this ui stuff is being worked on youtube has a lot of work to do in the live streaming uh, case and they have the unique position to be able to do what twitch can't which is develop a like a, a vod community uh, at the same time, like developing their live stream commentary and then being able to bring that into shorts content, which if they're not doing shorts, like you're, you're just giving up the bag. You're just giving, you're just letting somebody come in and, and just say, oh, don't mind me. And we'll take that. We'll see overall, uh, like if it's sustainable, I hear you got to get millions of views on the shorts. So be sure to, if you guys like them, hit the, the like button on those. Cause that's going to help me out if you guys like my content, but no pressure. It's up to you. I'll, I'll leave my future into your hands. If I do shorts, people will watch it. Um, and he's been doing a lot of shorts. If you're a new creator, you must be looking at this, hearing creators with a million, like Shadowversity, he, I think he has about the same number of subs as I do, maybe a little more. What? How could you possibly look at this and think, whoa, you know, like 
I want to be a content creator, but this dude with a million subs and this other dude with a million subs, um, they say that they're getting screwed. And, well, we are. Now, So if something, if uh, you were thinking about being a content creator and somebody with a million subs is, is complaining about it and that keeps you from doing it, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna blame you uh, to a degree. Like, don't let anybody stop you from doing the thing you want. You know, especially in terms of a creative and artistic expression. Life's gonna be hard. Like, if that is what's gonna keep you from starting and to see if you even like it, you're gonna look back in your life and you're gonna be really frustrated. Like, it's important that you leave it on the field. You know what? Would it have been easier if you had started 20 years ago when nobody else knew that there was any kind of money or any kind of gain or any kind of notoriety in this? Well, yeah. Were you alive 20 years ago? Like at some point you just got to sit here and tune out all the reasons to not do the thing you want and just effing do it. Um, and then ultimately, whether you succeed or not, at least you know that you did it right. You tried rather than like i see so many people they're like oh i thought about doing this but i didn't okay like you're going to have to rec you're going to have to reconcile that with yourself so don't let anybody big or small like whatever they're like especially when it like you know times are tough like when times are tough when when the views are down when all this is down this is the greatest time to get in this is the time to start this is the time to really go all in because nobody cares like there's like what you like your one subscriber is going to be like worried that your video didn't look as great didn't sound as great as it could have eh just do it and then do it again and then do it again and then do it again and then essentially then you can decide if you want to keep doing it. But if you're not making content because, you know, Shadowversy or Jeremy or whomever, it's like, oh man, it's really tough right now. Well, yeah, like, but I'm assuming you're still also getting a, getting a, having a job. I wouldn't abandon your, your safety net <laughs> to get into a creative space, um, you know, <laughs> right away. How long this commitment to shorts will last? What they're telling you is you must do this. And even if you're as old lump of coal like me, who've <laughs> seen YouTube do this over and over and over again, um, and 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 uh, fail and abandon products over and over and over. Remember Google Plus? Remember Stadia? Remember all these things? <laughs> no matter what you believe, if you don't do it, you get lost. So one of the things I'd point out is that as somebody who has done that multiple times, myself included, not to the degree and volume that Jeremy has, but in this case that when it comes down to what he's saying is that then why are you surprised? Like they have done this. This is like who they are. And as long as you know that, like I know that about a person, I think that's actually key to success in my mind, not, not guaranteed success, but a key to actually finding your way through the muck and mire in terms of, if you understand that that's something that that person does, you're going to be way better off that you know that about them. So then you can make decisions about it. Am I okay with this? So the, what he's proposing is like, either, what do you do? Like, do you stop making content? Well, no, he's not going to do that. Like, this is a part of like, you know, what he does. I, I don't, I think he could walk away from content creation easily and, and be just fine. But like there, there's a fun joy about it. There's a fun thing when it comes down to the discussion about it, but that all being said, what, well, I guess you adapt, right? Like the options are to, to, to die or to adapt. And that's essentially something that is just a life lesson that everybody needs to understand. You either adjust or you die. Or in this, you know, in this case, you, you either quit or you, you figure out a way, right? And, you know, Jeremy's a smart guy. He's going <laughs> to, I almost said smart. He's a smart kid. Yeah, hey, hey kid. Um, He's going to adapt like, and he's going to, he's going to put out his shorts and whether you like that or not, that's perfectly well and good. And the algorithm will evolve and change and shift and, um, you know, tastes and interest will, will do the same. And, uh, that's, a, that's kind of what you're getting into when you step into the, in, into the arena of creating things out, you know, online, like it's to say it is a, a way of change and the, and YouTube is the, the driver of the car, the manufacturer of the car that you're, we're all kind of along for the ride in, you know? So in my mind, it's, I, I get it from a, like, oh man, here we go again. Gotta, you know, gotta figure this out. Um, but like you got to, you really got two choices, adapter or, or give up.
And, you know, anal analytically, this is kind of a slow season. Mm -hmm. uh, well, especially now. For this particular, for my particular channel. And so it's important to not overreact. You know, it's like a dot on a line and think it's the reality going forward. But I will say this for the first time in years, my channel is not growing. It's weird to see that because I'm on top of trending news. I'm on top of, you know, I'm more on top of trending topics than probably anybody, uh, or at That's least as on top, why. I'll say, as anyone else. Over the weekend, I looked at analytics, Steven Crowder's channel, Tim Poole's channel, um, you know, similar channels, Ben Shapiro's channel. And um, the only one of those channels that is growing is Ben Shapiro's channel. The only difference between me and Crowder and Tim Pool and Ben Shapiro, what do you think that is? His last five uploads have been shorts. Now you look at these and they're not really impressive views. I'm trying to understand it. I'm watching this and I'm like, well, he's not really breaking through. His normal videos still do better than his shorts. But he's the only channel among all of us that's growing and he's growing really well. It's about 50, 50, call it 10. If we want to include this 50, 50 shorts to right. You would say, I would actually say it's not 50, 50. It's that for every of his videos, he's having a short and that short is acting as an advertisement for somebody to go check out the full video in and of itself. And I think that there's probably some uh, logic and algorithmic there. You're actually seeing me do that. Like you're seeing me break up my videos into shorts and kind of rolling that out. So then in hopes that it kind of hits the algorithm piece of it and people maybe check out the full video. You'll see probably this video broken up into shorts um, because at the, at the end of the day, it just, it's just a part, it just becomes a part of the new workflow. You know, YouTube provides insights on new short features while answering, they're totally committed to it. They should be. You it, know, so uh, YouTube wants to be a streaming platform and they suck at it. <laughs> That's true. The they're, Super they're... Chat feature is fun, <laughs> neat, but discoverability is garbage. Very There's true. no way a new streamer should ever consider starting streaming on YouTube. You should start as a new streamer streaming across the board. Don't limit yourself to one platform. You should literally be streaming multi-stream to Twitch, Facebook, heck, and YouTube. And then I would uh, completely bypass the uh, Twitch affiliate, which locks you exclusively into their platform. That's going to kill uh, your growth. I would recommend doing it on all the platforms, making that more of a discussion. But before even streaming, I wouldn't recommend streaming at all, especially if you're an adult. Now, if you're if you don't have a family, you don't have kids. By all means, it's your time. You do with whatever you want with it. But if you've got a family and kids, I would seriously not even talk about streaming until you're just got a disciplined habit of actually uploading videos so that people can find them all throughout the day, all throughout the week, month, year, etc. rather than you sit down and sit here like trying to get people to come check out your stream. They don't know who you are. Uh, stream, a stream is better set up when there is a relationship there. And streams then, if you wanna have discoverability while streaming, it usually has to be the hot new game that's about to come out or just came out. And then they're just kind of writing that to see if they even want to pick up that game for themselves they'll make their decision and, the, and then they'll bounce out so it's not actually developing a community or a, a relationship with uh with the person in your community or your audience in this regard and that's where when i see a lot of people you know talk about wanting to come into streaming and it's like i would recommend not doing that at first i would recommend making stuff learning how to edit videos putting those videos out uh, even if they're long form and then chopping them up and then getting into that discipline habit and then essentially once you have that and you have that discipline then you can look at actually adding in live streaming i see a lot of people do it live streaming first but especially when you have a family uh job uh you things and responsibilities that you have to take care of uh you're gonna stop streaming you don't see me streaming all the time like it is typically maybe twice a week maybe and the only reason for that is because my wife is like feels guilty because you guys have subscribed and she likes that when I get to go and play video games with my friends, which is what I consider this channel and community, we're hanging out, we're playing games, we're talking, and it's a good amount of fun. But that's so that came after me working on guides and videos to help people enjoy the games that I was enjoying. And that was that relationship. Started with the videos, and then you might get two streams out of me. Might, most likely, maybe, maybe one. On average, one. If you're, if, if I'm lucky, I almost said if you're lucky, no, no, no. If I'm lucky, maybe two.
It's just the fact. You will not be found. You still have to start on Twitch. Now, the, the yeah, YouTube you goes and they assign these Maybe. monster streamers from tw from Twitch. Yeah. But And then so they can show these big numbers. But in my experience, none, and I mean none of these big star streamers, Jim the Tatman, Dr. Disrespect, all these people, they don't get any bigger. No one really is actually growing right now. That's actually what Ninja was even talking about, calling this all the way back. Is that right now, like everything's just kind of, kind of just in its space, you know, it's kind of persisting and existing and uh and youtube signing people over you know i i get it um i would rather i would i think they'll get more people with the with the features that people find over on twitch if all of a sudden youtube had the streaming tools and features i think you'll actually see twitch become more uh, competitive and more you know like they'll have to evolve to be better for the creators and that's why i think competition is absolutely key YouTube signing people over, that seems to be kind of a part of the business to develop that culture, to get that data, uh, to get that feedback. And uh, as long as it then pays out for everybody, then I think it, it then that's a fine, that's a fine deal. But we're going to have to wait and see how that it's only going to take time now. Yeah, I think overall, like streaming in and of itself is an interesting space. But it can't be your be all end all. There was, I think, a time where that just kind of that kind of blew up and a lot of that's where a lot of people get stuck in that that's where it all is but it's got to be paired with a with a like a vod strategy clip strategy like it's got to be paired with multiple styles of content uh if you want to continue to be a part of that and that's why i think it's so exhausting I mean, like that's why when somebody says they want to be a streamer um i i have a hard time relating to it because i don't want to be a streamer i like being a youtuber i like being a you know a video like uploader um I like streaming, but if you were going to sit here and say that that's what I was going to do day in and day out, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think I'd want that. They don't get any bigger once they're here. Doc is streaming for the same 40,000 people that he was when he started on this platform two years ago. YouTube, by the way, <laughs> you know why they tell me they want to do live streams is because they take a 30% cut of super chats and they don't have to run ads to make money then, right? So I'm working for them in real time when I live stream. So over on Twitch right now, uh, they have opted us into a, uh, an, I think this is what they're going to be coming down the pipeline. Uh, they're opting us into a system where they automatically handle the ads. They automatically run them whatever interval and they just manage it. And in my stress level in streaming has gone way down because prior to that, anytime I was streaming, they kept popping up on my dashboard. Hey, you need to run ads because we're going to, we're going to start running them for people who come in. And what you find is that when you stream, having an ad right up front is not not the right call. In fact, actually, when I stream over here on YouTube, they give me the ability to turn that off. And I do, like, because it's not about, in my mind, I think that's the time for us hanging out. I think I think that's kind of a social hour, but that's just how I viewed it in this whole time. Uh, so Twitch was always kind of like, run ads, you gotta run ads and, you know, like, you know, et cetera. And it's like, ah, oh, fine. You know, it, like, but it, the, it, it was so annoying because you just kind of see it. Now they handle it right now, and my stress level on Twitch has dropped down. Just it is like, all right, like, you handle it. Like, if you if you the platform want to run ads, you handle it. What's interesting right now on YouTube on live stream, uh, they're saying, hey, now would be a really good time to run an ad, Brian. Brian, have you thought about running an ad? I'm like, ah, leave it alone. Like, that's I don't, you know, no, I'm not going to. That's not what like. If you want to run an ad, you run an ad, right? I'm not don't make me the manager of this right and i get that people don't want to have their 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 content interrupted right and so then i think youtube has to figure that out twitch does buy the subs and the, the prime subs etc so that somebody who is doing that they don't they don't run they don't have that interruption youtube will have to figure that out but no no like stop interrupting me like the i i don't know maybe that's maybe that's just me like one guy in a, in a sea of it but it is what it is. Shorts? I don't know what they're going to do. I made $2 on shorts last month. Okay? I did a couple. But I mean, like, you don't make any money on shorts. Yeah. So now I'm working for free to help build YouTube's short platform to compete with TikTok. The shorts, in my mind, though, are like a, a mini ad for your channel and content, right? And that's, like... I'm not, I'm not going into it thinking that I'm making money. I think I'm going into it as a, well, hello, welcome to the channel, et cetera. This is because what you might find here. Maybe you'll check out the full VODs, et cetera. 
And that's kind of the mindset. Like I'm not going into it with that idea of making money. Maybe YouTube will figure out how to monetize shorts in a way that like ends up paying out the creators. I know it's awful for TikTokers because TikTokers shorts fund has been kept very, very low, but I think they're even now offering subscriptions over there. So it is weird. I like at the end of the day, I think if you're thinking about shorts to make money, then you're actually approaching shorts the wrong way, as opposed to shorts being kind of a, a like a warm hello, uh, warm handoff, warm introduction to the kind of content that people might find and enjoy on the platform or on your channel, then then you're in, in the winning bucket. And that's why, again, I choose to not notify you guys when the short goes up. Uh, it just it's just going to be there for you guys if you guys want to check it out, if that's something you're interested in. Um, or if nothing else, it maybe hopefully will find somebody who is just kind of perusing and maybe they'll come check out the channel for other, you know, the other content. It's all about discoverability. It's a game of attention, if you will, and trying to both get it and, and, and acquire it. And that's why I think the multi-channel, again, is the healthiest approach for a content creator who wants to cover a wider range of things because then you don't have to get sensationalized with it. Now, is YouTube going to stay committed? Because for the first time in history, I don't know. But <laughs> they're forcing creators to take on all these new types of content, burning us out, changing their algorithm. It's just not good. So I would expect, I would not be surprised if you saw more channels that you like having to be forced into making shorts or live streaming more um, because this is the future that YouTube wants and they're going to break us until they get it. So at that, at its core, kind of his final thought here, I, Oh, you know, when you think about it, like the burnout is absolutely a thing that you have to be very well aware of. And so from you as a, like, if you're just thinking from my perspective as a viewer, so I, you know, I like to go check in on certain channels from time to time. Um, but you got to look at your subscriptions feed over your home feed in order to kind of see those maybe you've subscribed to, and you're just not seeing those videos pop up anymore because the home feed is curated. It's going to try to give you something that you want to watch. And um, yeah, it's interesting because like his home feed is clearly absolutely different from what my home feed is right now. My home feed is like all recession and upcoming, you know, food global shortage crisis. And this is yada, 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 this, yada, yada, that. And so like it is different, right? We're all going to have different things in our feed. But I noticed that I'm not seeing the things that I normally like to watch. And so I'm having to go and try to seek those out and see if it then makes the adjustment overall. But I, I don't know, like YouTube does these changes. I, you just kind of have to roll with it because that's just a part of it, you know, in my mind and get feedback. Let me know your thoughts, especially because like, you know, are you seeing the videos that you want to see or are you finding that you're not being fed the content that you want? I like, honestly, I would love to know um, because I think confirmation bias is heavily at play here. Now I stated regarding other conversations like with ACG, his, he, he said he was talking with Yang Yao and skill up and about how within gaming and even kind of ninja commented on this it's like all in all like especially with the summer like i'm not spending time that much time on youtube i'm more or less taking and playing with the kids and we're doing things around the house and you know we're going to the pool and we're doing all these different things that you know it just is the summer it's, this is the time that 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 happens uh in the past especially the last couple to like two years everybody's kind of been more locked in so i think that overall like you know people are looking forward to getting out and doing more things and that's actually good and healthy uh in the long run but guys that's that's the last kind of thought i have on it like from a content creator uh as and a viewer on on youtube you know like youtube's gonna youtube and it's good to have especially if you're trying to make this a career a, a multi-pronged a multi uh you know like revenue approach so that like as things change you don't find yourself completely, um, you know, at a loss. And if you're getting into it for just the money, I think you're going to find that there's better ways to spend your time uh, in the long run. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you feel like it earns it, like, favorite, subscribe, share, all that wonderful stuff. I should make sure I mentioned clips as well. Again, that's something that they're talking about shorts. I, I do think that that's going to be a feature that's going to come into play at some point to be able to convert whatever you guys clip into shorts. And I think that'll end up helping out in the long run. Anyway, guys, my name is Brian. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you have a good day and hopefully I'll see you in my next video. But until then, take care. Yeah. It's time to chill out on the couch and read some comments. That's right. You know me when it comes to destiny.
I'm off for the clam, and I'm glad you're feeling better. Oh, yeah.